How's it going everyone? Welcome back. In this week's video, I gathered some Photoshop tips and tricks for y'all that I think every photo manipulation designer should know. These tips and tricks have honestly helped me tremendously in my workflow as a Photoshop artist. But before we get started, I would appreciate y'all if you can hit the subscribe button down below, as 78% of y'all aren't subscribed yet. I put hours upon hours into these videos and it would really mean a lot. With that being said, let's get it. So the first tip I'm showing y'all today is one I recently actually started using um, not too long ago, maybe like a couple months ago, probably when I first started my YouTube channel. So if you look at the top right, it says there's a section right here called the Navigator Tool. And it's essentially a preview of your entire composition. So to get this, you will go to Windows uh, and scroll down all the way to Navigator and select that and make sure it's checked. And then it should pop up around here. I think it's on this bar. And then you just um, pops up like that. Then you drag it over here into the tabs. I put it at the front, but there. So this is super helpful if you're, let's say, designing a thumbnail, something with text or little details that have to be visible in your design. If you go over here, there's a slider right here, right? To the left side, it's that little small mountain. To the right, it's to the, it's a bigger mountain. So obviously this slider is to make this bigger and this smaller. And over here on the right, it will tell you what part you're focused on on your entire screen. So this red box is what you're focused on on your actual workspace. So if you like, let's say you scroll all the way over here, right? You know exactly what you're working on over here. Um, so this is helpful to see how your overall composition is looking, how everything's um, blending together, stuff like that. So one trick I do is that when I'm designing thumbnails, I actually scroll this all the way up until it fits just like that. So it's kind of the same size of a YouTube thumbnail as you would see it on YouTube dashboard on your phone, stuff like that. So this helps me see how easy it is for the title to be seen as if I was a YouTube viewer, you know? So for the second tip today, it's actually kind of a three in one. So let's say you're done designing. These are all your layers, correct? You think your composition is done. You're about to export and post it on Instagram or whatever, correct? wrong so what you're gonna do is shift click the top layer scroll all the way to, to the bottom and make sure all your layers are unlocked shift click the very bottom layer click command g and then it's grouped step one after you group them you want to make a copy just so you don't lose it and then that copy you want to merge that group once you merge that group it can be a rasterized layer or a smart object I prefer for it to be a smart object because of what we're about to do next now that it's a smart object you go up to filter then camera filter so if you don't know what camera is it's a way to further enhance your composition by affecting different variables such as contrast highlights shadows exposure even color so what we're gonna do is first we're gonna click Q and what Q does is it shows you a before and after of your camera raw settings. So to the left side, it's before um, using camera raw, and obviously the right side is after. So what you do on this panel over here is only gonna affect the after side of the composition, all right? So over here, once you're done, you click okay. And then you can see it's a lot better than without having camera raw. This is after camera raw, this is before camera raw. For the third one today, it is content aware fill. If you don't know what content aware fill is, well, let me just show you. So let's say you have this image right here of this picture frame right above the pillows on the couch, right? Um, and you don't want the picture frame there at all. So what you're gonna do is click L on your keyboard, make a selection around the object that you don't want in your composition, just like so. And then the first one I'm gonna show you is by going to edit, then going to content aware fill, and then just clicking OK. And just like that, it is gone. No trace of it ever being there, completely gone. Boom, you're perfect, you're done. For the next example, let's say you don't want this basketball here at all. You don't want it in the frame, you don't want it in the composition. Um, you can also click M, right? You can either do rectangle, circle, doesn't matter. You can also use the pen tool. Let's say we're using the marquee tool for right now. Select the basketball just like so and make sure your layer is rasterized and not a smart object okay it only works with our rasterized layers so select your object and the second way you can do it is by right clicking clicking fill make sure it's on content aware 
and then make sure your opacity is on 100%. Click OK. Done. No trace of the basketball ever being there. I mean, the chains are still moving, but it doesn't matter. For the final tip, it is a quite simple one. It's one if you want to select colors from different programs. So let's say you're in Photoshop. You want to have the other program or website or whatever it is opened up next to Photoshop. So once you have that open, you want to click the eyedropper tool in Photoshop right over here. You can also click I on your keyboard. And what you want to do is click on your canvas, hold it, drag it across onto the other program. And as you can see, as I drag the eyedropper tool over my Instagram posts, the foreground color in Photoshop changes. So as I'm over this image, I can go to the clouds over here and it gives me that same orangish brownish color in my foreground swatch. So this is really helpful if you need a specific color that you can't really find in the color picker yourself. So this is an easier way to get that exact color into your foreground swatch. So that's the end of the video. I hope y'all enjoyed and learned something new today. If y'all got any tips you want me to show in the next video, let me know down in the comments below, or you can just share to help the community out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. With that being said, have a good one. Peace out.